Hello and welcome to the business interview. I'm Marcus Carlson. Today, we're counting the cost of the Egyptian revolution earlier this year. The uprising against President Mubarak may have been a giant leap for people power, but tourism dwindled and sites like the pyramids and the temples of Luxor were left virtually empty. The official figures tell the story. Visitor numbers were down 46% in the first quarter. And for more on that impact, we can speak to Munir Fakri Abdel Noor, who is the Egyptian tourism minister. Welcome to France 24. Uh, let me start with this. The visitor numbers almost halved from uh, January to March. Have you been able to reverse the trend? Yes. As a matter of fact, uh, if we take the four month, uh, that is until the end of April, we're down 42%. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, to be more precise, uh, in February we were down 80% compared to February of last year. Uh, in March we were down 60%. And uh, in April, we were down 35%. So you're confident that you've hit the bottom, so to speak, and things are pointing oh, definitely. upwards? Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. I mean, the trend is very clearly uh, uh, ascending, and I think we are on the path to recovery. When do you think things will go back to normal? 100% normal, I think, by September. That quickly? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You know, let me know. Let me tell you uh, very modestly. Uh, Egypt is a unique destination. I mean, tourism business cannot do without Egypt. Uh, and this is why it bounces back very quickly. It has always uh, bounced back very quickly. But there are some clouds on the horizon, though. A lot of analysts are warning that there could be more unrest in the months to come and the build-up to the parliamentary election, also the presidential election. Uh, as I say, there are some clouds on the horizon, nonetheless. Uh, well, I'm not sure. I disagree. Obviously, we... Uh, are heading towards elections. I mm -hmm. don't know whether those elections will take place. I'm talking about parliamentary. I'm not sure whether uh, the elections will take place in September or maybe uh, slightly later. Nevertheless, I mean, we have had elections uh, back in November, last November 2010. Uh, they were quite tough mm -hmm. and they did not affect tourism at all. On the contrary. Uh, November and December 2010, uh, where uh, uh, tourism reached its peak. Uh, but it is ever. easily imaginable, though, isn't it, that, that if there, are, there is more unrest, that people, people will stay away and the visitor numbers will continue being well, lower. Yeah, obviously, with if, you can say whatever you want. But the matter of fact is that uh, in the midst of the revolution, from the 25th of January until today, we didn't have a single incident mm -hmm. uh, uh, perpetrated against a tourist. And uh, it's not uh, by mere luck. Uh, security is there. Security is prevailing. We have given a total priority to the security in the touristic centers, uh, to the hotels, and to the tourists. And, uh, well, uh, uh, it proved, we were proved right, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the results are there. As you said before, tourism is hugely important for the Egyptian economy. It employs uh, run about uh, one and a half million people, and it stands no, for more. More, more than 10% of GDP. Yeah. What kind of an impact economically, though, has the tourism downturn caused you so far? So far, our loss until end of, February, until end of April is $2 billion. Uh, in fact, I think until year end, if my plans uh, prove to be correct, I think the total loss will amount to around $3 billion. Mm -hmm. uh, let me give you a few figures. Back in 2010, the total number of tourists visiting Egypt amounted to 14.8 uh, million tourists. Uh, total income was uh, around 13 billion US dollars. Uh, my plan, ambitious, but I think realistic, uh, is that we'll end up this year with around 11 million tourists, mm -hmm. generating a total income of 10 billion US dollars. If we look I at hope I'm right. If we look at economic growth on Egypt, uh, the economy is uh, projected to grow by just run about 1% this year. How will you be able to turn it around, so to speak, in, in the wider scale, the economy as a whole, and not just the tourism sector? Well, there are two forecasts for the economic growth. Uh, there's one forecast based on 1%, 
and the other forecast on which the budget, the Egyptian budget, is based, uh, which is uh, 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 targeting a 3.2% uh, growth. Uh, obviously, it is much below what we did in 2010, and mm. definitely much below what we uh, 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 did uh, back in 2007-2008, when we reached uh, 7%. Uh, yes, the turnaround, I think, uh, will come uh, by, uh, the, by attracting foreign investments, by attracting investments in general. Uh, we believe and we're confident that uh, in an environment, uh, in a democratic environment, uh, where everything is transpar transparent, with definitely, definitely less corruption, mm -hmm. uh, less nepotism, uh, uh, we will be able to attract the confidence and the trust of uh, foreign investors and local investors. Now, I want to switch tack a little bit to the International Monetary Fund recently agreed to lend Egypt uh, $3 billion. Let's that listen to a statement uh, by your finance minister on that uh, loan. It's an agreement to lend $3 billion. We're borrowing these $3 billion to cover this year, to cover a part of our needs for this year. Repayment begins after three and a quarter years and will be completed within five years. But the most important point, the most important advantage is the interest rate. The interest rate is one and a half percent. Minister, will Egypt be able to turn it around with these uh, three million dollars, or billion dollars rather? No, those three billion dollars uh, are uh, borrowed to uh, cover, to partly cover the deficit in our budget. We have a huge bud budget deficit this year. It uh, amounts to 10% uh, of our GDP. Mm -hmm. It's huge. But it's huge because we've allocated uh, 30 billion Egyptian pounds, 10 billion Egyptian pounds to each uh, the mi Ministry of Health, uh, Education and Housing. Uh, to provide subsidies for, for ordinary Egyptians? No, to invest. To invest in uh, raising the standards of education, to invest raising the standard of uh, health, uh, and hospital services and to invest in housing to solve the housing the huge housing problems mm -hmm. we're facing in fact you have to know that uh, our microeconomic figures were beautiful uh, in 2007 2008 we were very very proud of mm. uh, the results but nonetheless uh, public services were deteriorating uh, big time. Speaking of macroeconomic figures, uh, the IMF, they're, they're ex demanding something in return. They want fiscal reforms in Egypt. Sure, sure. Is that going to happen? It is happening. It has already happened. Uh, you know, we had a flat tax rate of 20%. We've introduced uh, a higher level of tax rate at 25% for any income above 10 million uh, Egyptian pounds annually, whether for corporate tax or individual taxes. It has been accepted by uh, uh, the business world. It has been accepted by the public opinion. I mean, this is absolutely no problem. Uh, back to our budget deficit. Our budget deficit is the result of huge mm. uh, public expenditure in public services that are and were needed and were totally uh, uh, disregarded in the, in, in, in the past. Uh, now, opinion polls show that the economy is really the number one issue for ordinary Egyptians at this stage. Course. What can the government tell them, tell ordinary Egyptians who are really concerned at this stage, and, and understandably so? Well, uh, first of all, I think the government is currently catering to, this, uh, to the public opinion needs. First of all, we're increasing uh, the minimum wage. The minimum wage was ridiculous at 400 Egyptian pounds uh, monthly. It has been increased to 700 with a plan to increase it to uh, 1,200 uh, within five years. Mm -hmm. uh, a great part of the public expenditure are uh, directed towards subsidies. Uh, and this needs to be uh, uh, changed.
Mm -hmm. I mean, the way uh, the subsidies are distributed, unfortunately, uh, is not uh, the best way, and there's a lot of leakage. Uh, and we need to review and revisit uh, this issue. I want to end on a political note, because you're a leader from the, the Waft Party, which Absolutely. used to be in opposition before Mubarak uh, fell or before he resigned. Uh, what are your hopes ahead of the elections? Ahead of the election, my hope is that all liberal and secular political parties unite in order to uh, help uh, install the states uh, we want. Mm -hmm. We want You democratic. say that's your hope, but are you confident that could happen as well? We have to work on that, and if we work well, it will happen. Uh, we need to create a democratic, uh, secular, uh, fair and modern state, mm. and to do the and to do, I mean to reach this goal, I think all liberal secular parties need to unite, to join forces, and uh, to face uh, the competition that uh, uh, is on the ground. Okay, on a note of hope, we're going to end this interview. Thanks very much indeed, uh, Munir Fakri Abdul Noor, the Egyptian Tourism Minister. We really appreciate your time. I thank you very much. And with that, we're going to wrap up the program as well. Thanks for watching France 24.